Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of Just My Two Cents. I'm your host, L.A. Wilkes, a 17-year law enforcement veteran. Um, I've been a cop on the job, like I said, over 17 years, and I'm just here to give my opinion on um, cases. And if you like uh, what I'm saying, uh, please subscribe, tell others, others about it. Share uh, these videos because it actually helps a lot. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, and today we're discussing a case. Um, it's a case that um, at first I kind of gave the, the side eye to, and then I started reading it some more. And I think it's something that um, a lot of younger cops, even a lot of younger men and women, can um, can take something and learn about uh, and take something from and leave it on. Um, I'm calling it uh, grooming or consent. Uh, I think the article that um, that I'm going to read from kind of gives a better narrative of the situation uh, way more than I can. So I'm going to read from an article. I'm going to show you a video that I did on grooming and consent. Um, well, actually, the video I did was a few weeks ago that talked about snitching and how I consider uh, grooming a part of no snitching. And this kind of goes into what I was talking about before, because we all know as a narrative with the police department, it's a thin blue line and that you don't go against your brother. In some ways that is true. Um, but the part I'm looking at is the part of, you don't tell what's going on. You try to keep things in house. And a lot of times that's how these groomers or these people who are up to no good, no matter what profession you're in, professional environment you're in, even law enforcement, they can try to take advantage of that. And that's all a part of that no snitching. I, I said it a few weeks ago in one of my streams. Um, and I'm actually play that short sample of what I of what I said. Um, so you can kind of get a gist of what I'm talking about. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, and it, like I said, it, it kind of went to what I was talking about with this uh, with this grooming thing. It, it go hand in hand. You got to keep an open mind with it. But once you 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 see what I'm talking about, then uh, you'll know. I want to get into something different with um, that topic with her. Um, it got me to thinking um, about snitching and not telling. Like I said, it was it's, that was really interesting to me. Um, thanks for everybody for being here. Ilvik about snitching in our community. Um, do you think? Um, I'm gonna drop the I'm gonna drop the, the link pretty early tonight also. But do y'all think? Well, I'm not even gonna ask do y'all think. I kind of equate right now the snitching to grooming, and I think um, I was kind of talking about that yesterday. I don't know if it was Beastly Nerd who agreed with me or one of the other uh, panel members. Um, yeah, yeah, but not even not even taken like that. So I want to kind of break it down to family members doing things to each other and like i said tana kind of breaking down to the grooming aspect of it because to me snitching is definitely a part of uh no snitching is definitely a part of uh of grooming if you if you if you think about it because well i i i looked up grooming for a while because i wanted to kind of get the proper definition of it and um so I'm going to just break that down so y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. And All right. So somebody, uh, this is a RAN article, whatever RAN, whatever, I'm stupid, I can't read, but the warning signs of grooming. And I'm gonna just going to read kind of like the top part because it kind of gets into more so what I want to talk about. Um, one tool common to those who's SA of kids is grooming manipulative behaviors that the abusers use to gain access to potential victims, coerce them to agree to the abuse and reduce the risk of being caught. While these tactics are used uh, most often against younger kids, is kind of what I'm gonna get into um, also, teens and vulnerable adults who all, uh, are also at risk. Uh, So you kind of see what I'm uh, what I'm talking about with the grooming aspect. Um, 
and the not telling. Like I said, it kind of goes hand in hand with me. That's a video I did a couple of weeks ago. If you actually go to my uh, channel, um, go to my playlist, it actually says no snitching. It was a pretty good stream. It was kind of long. You can kind of skip through it and um, find and come to some of the parts that you like. But um, let's get into this news article. Um, all right. This actually happened. Uh, JCP, say JCCPD officer who shot uh, this sergeant. I thought he was going to uh, R word me. Of course, I can't say that over YouTube. Uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. I thought he was going to me. Those were the words that James City Council County police officer Michael Rusk screamed at 911 operator shortly at allegedly shooting and seriously hurting Sergeant, Her sergeant Christopher Gibson outside of Williamsburg, Dwar in January. Rusk is facing a, facing charges in connection to the January shooting, which investigators initially said had happened as a result of a, ver a verbal argument at a night at after a night of drinking. The 911 call made by the alleged shooter, however, along with the surveillance video exclusively obtained by Ten on your side, shows another side of the story. Uh, Rusk family and lawyers agree to evidence, makes it a case for self defense. After he says that he suffered an unwanted sexual sexual advance from his superior officer, uh, this call was made in early hours of January 25th from outside a bar at Scotland Street in Williamsburg. That's when James City County uh, Officer Michael Rusk allegedly shot Sergeant J Gibson. Rusk calls and immediately states his name and badge number to the dispatcher before saying, "I shot Sergeant Gibson." He goes on to say, "I pulled a gun on him because he was uh, explicitly advancing on me." Uh, Rusk dad tells 10 on your side, such and such and such and such. Um, this is uh, one of the parts I want to get to. Apparently, he's saying this went on for a long time, folks. And and this is the part of the grooming I was uh, I was alleging, uh, alluding to. Uh, we just kind of wrote it off as a superior looking out for the, after a subordinate, but it just started getting creepy. Uh, Gibson would just show up out of nowhere on the streets where Michael's girlfriend lived. Uh, there was extremely inappropriate touching, stalking, and grooming, he said. He, could you imagine? Russ claims his son reported this behavior to others at the police department, but was written off. A Freedom of Information Act, uh, about 10 on your side, requesting the history of any uh, complaints filed against the Gibson within the department was denied. Multiple attempts to reach Gibson for, for comments were uh, in return. Well, I'm pretty sure he shot up, so I don't know how many uh, comments he's going to give you, but I digress. On the 911 call, Rusk tells the dispatcher that he tried to deny Gibson's advances. And I'm going to play the video for you so you can actually see and make a adjustment call for yourself. I told him no, and he just keep kept going. I told him to stop. He kept going. I thought he was going to uh, R-word me. He said, I hate having to say the R-word. It's so stupid, but it is what it is. The two are, two are seen hours before the shooting on surveillance video. At first, they are sitting across from one another at a table. Then Gibson moves around to the other side, so he's sitting next to the next to Rusk. That's when Gibson reached for Rusk's hand at the table. The advance is met with hesitation from the younger officer. The video also shows two leaving a bar just about an hour before the shooting. And after Gibson puts his hands on Rusk's shoulder, you see Rusk forcefully push him off and put a finger in his face before walking away. Uh, this is his lawyers. If our clients were a female, which is true, this would be a, a, a drastically different. It's clear self, uh, self-defense issue, said Peyton Akers, one of the Russ lawyers. It's very unfortunate that the narrative that's out there isn't a narrative that's going to come to the light of the trial. If this goes to trial, I believe 911 call will play a major role in our client's innocence. Um, if the if I had a daughter in the same position as my son, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's another true statement. Well, partially true. I don't know, but I, I, I'm gonna give my opinion. Say they will. They are, they would have listened, and we would have an innocent person fighting for their freedom. Following the incident, James City Council Police Department rest police rest on uh, unpaid administrative leave, pending the outcome of the investigation, which is being conducted by Williamsburg Police. Both Williamsburg Police and James City Council Police, County Police, 
declined to offer comments from the story and calls to the special prosecutor trying this case were unreturned. Um, so I apologize for my reading. I'm dumb as hell, but you kind of get the gist of it. So could you imagine um, this is kind of a he said, she said thing. So you don't know who whose side to believe on this. But like I said, I got a video to play for y'all. And once you know, I play the video, you kind of you kind of tell me what y'all think. And because this case is, like I said, is rather interesting. And once uh, once you see it, I'll give a couple more of my thoughts on it charges in connection to that January shooting, which seriously hurt Sergeant Christopher Gibson. Investigators initially said the two officers got into a fight after a night of drinking. But as 10 of your size Julie Millay learned, the shooting might have been about much more than a bar fight. Yeah, Julie? Tom and Amy investigators simply said the two officers involved in the shooting were known to each other. Now we're learning what that might really mean. The alleged shooter, Michael Rusk, says he pulled the trigger in self-defense because of unwanted advances by his sergeant. We're about to share exclusive surveillance video and the 911 call from the shooting, which we played for Michael Rusk's family for the first time. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to hear it. For the first time, Jason Rusk is hearing the 911 call his son made in the early morning hours of January 25th. Oh, I got Sergeant Gibson. <laughs> Do what? I shot Sergeant Gibson. I pulled a gun at him. Can you fing on me? Is he breathing? He just fell out. James City County Police Officer Michael Rusk called 911 after he allegedly shot his superior officer, Sergeant Christopher Gibson, outside a Williamsburg bar, where the two had been drinking together. Video given exclusively to 10 on your side shows the two officers before this happened. I got a got it on his right arm. Okay, I need you to take a deep breath for me, okay? Is he breathing? Is he breathing? The 911 call goes on for just over five minutes. That's when responding officers show up to find Gibson had been shot three times, seriously hurt in his stomach and shoulder. Court documents show Gibson told officers Rusk shot him after a verbal argument. But Rusk, his dad, and his lawyers say it was much more than that. You know, it started to get creepy. Jason Rusk says his son told him about unwanted attention he got from his superior officer leading up to the shooting and that he had reported it to others on the force. There was a year's worth of grooming that had taken place. Rusk says his son is the victim of unwanted sexual advances and had been for a long time. Extremely inappropriate touching, stalking, the grooming, the previous to the incident assaults. We reached out to Gibson several times to ask him about these allegations. He declined to speak with us. We also requested from JCCPD a record of any complaints filed against Gibson during his time there. We were denied. The video shows the officers at the bar prior to the shooting. You can see them sitting across from each other at the start. Then you'll see Gibson move in to sit next to Rusk. Gibson reaches for Rusk's hand Speaking under the hell, table, man. which seems to be met with hesitation from the younger officer. Then, just about an hour before the shooting, the two are seen leaving together. After Gibson puts his hand on Rusk's shoulder, you see Rusk forcefully push him off and put a finger in his face before walking away. We don't know what happened next, but after the shooting, Rusk makes this claim to the 911 dispatcher. I told him this is all I ain't gonna f Help me. Help me. If our client was a female, uh, this case would be drastically different. That's a Rusk's fact. lawyer says the video and 911 call make a clear case for self defense. I think it'll show that. Certain steps weren't taken that needed to be taken. The attorney says those steps, like looking into Rusk's claims of unwanted sexual advances, could have prevented what Rusk's dad calls a tragedy, which will affect his son for the rest of his life. He told people from the get-go that he was sexually assaulted. He said no, and he kept on. He said no, and he kept on. If I had a daughter in the same position, we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't have an innocent person fighting for their freedom. Williamsburg officers are investigating the shooting. They had no comment on. 
Um, all right, you see that, and you see there. So, like I said, it was a, it's kind of a he said she said thing. And my my views on it is this is one of the reasons why, um, when I got older and saw the police department, I stopped going out drinking and hanging with cops, um, because cops do dumb things, man. You know, I said it before. I'm not really pro police. I'm just me, whatever that means. But cops do dumb things. I'm pretty sure a lot of older vets will tell you that. Um, a lot of times we're drinking in guns, and I'm a. I'm not saying anything against guns because I'm a gun guy. I believe everybody should have guns, but drinking in guns make people stupid. Um, so that's one reason, and also, um, this supervisor, right? Even let's say if it was consensual, say if it was. I'm not saying it was or wasn't. He should be reprimanded, and this is only my opinion because what kind of supervisor has tried to have a a relationship with a subordinate. Then in itself, just just going out to drinks with this cat, this this young man, as a supervisor. I mean, it's, that's not even that's not even a partially professional man. Especially as a rookie, maybe as an older cop, and you know you've been knowing him for a long time. But as a rookie, that's just extremely unprofessional. And it's also that it seemed more so like a date than anything else. And I'm not saying anything about the younger uh, the younger cop because, like I said, I don't know. And um, he could have been uh, felt like, you know, peer pressure to go into that environment. And if, and that's the case, then that police department has a lot to answer for. I mean, this whole case could have been avoided by so many different things. And I just want people to know, even younger, younger adults, um, that you sometimes you got to use your head. And I understand he did everything he could have done. And honestly, if he reported it to his superiors and there was nothing else done about it, I don't know how much he could have done, much more he could have done. I just hope that this trial is going to be interesting. I just hope that if what that young man said is true, that he would get some type of um, um, justice for him and actually not being charged with the case. Well, if he is going to court, he is being charged. That was a dumb thing to say. But um, actually getting, you know, be found not guilty and, have some type of recourse because once again i don't know how this sergeant gets out of this unscathed i mean regardless of anything that's just inappropriate at the highest order and he had to know better and i just and i just want younger people to know man sometimes you got to just try to make better decisions man i know you think everybody's your buddy buddy and everything else but a lot of times you you got to think before you act. Um, but like I said, in this situation, if he felt peer pressured and he kept telling people about it and all this other nonsense, then I don't know how much more he could have done, honestly, than, you know, besides quitting. But it seems like this could have had a, uh, this could have had a different outcome if, if it's true, something I keep saying that because you know how stupid people are. Uh, if it's true that he kept reporting it and nothing was being done. But um, um, like I said before, uh, this is pretty interesting to me. Um, kind of gave me the side. I didn't know. I didn't know what to think before reading into this case. And after I saw it, I'm like, hmm. I think this is some lessons we all could learn about and take something from. So let me know what you think. You can like, comment, subscribe to LA Wilkes, and um, especially the porch uh, sessions when I'm on every day with uh, the rest of my family, Kai. Black Thoughts, uh, Black Suit of Fire, and the rest of the crew. Um, so once again, like I said, leave a like, leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And I don't care what kind of comments you leave, um, negative or uh, good. Also, tell me what I'm doing right or wrong. I'm pretty new to this, as you can tell. I'm rambling on. My thumbnails stink and everything else. But I like criticism because criticism makes me better. And the more money you send me, the better I can do be perfectly honest with you so um like i said leave a comment let me know what you think share this video with others and hopefully i can continue to do this because if you enjoy these type of videos i will keep pushing and doing more because right now um i got a few things going on in my personal situation so i'm not working every day so like i said let me know um, what you think and uh, everybody god bless have a good day